Hi everyone, my name is Mohamed Walid and I am a second year oncology pharmacy resident at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center. A little bit about me, so I'm originally from Connecticut. I went to pharmacy school at the University of Connecticut and I graduated in 2019. I decided I wanted to pursue further training, so I did a first year pharmacy residency at Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center located in Baltimore, Maryland, where I was exposed, exposed to many different practice areas such as internal medicine, infectious diseases, uh, and of course oncology. So I had exposure both in the inpatient setting and the outpatient setting both at Johns Hopkins Bayview Medical Center and then the Johns Hopkins Hospital. Um, and now I'm pursuing a second year residency specializing in oncology at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center in New Hampshire. Uh, if there's one thing that I am able to inform all my viewers is, is the different areas where pharmacists practice. So I think a lot of times when we think of pharmacists, we think of that person standing behind the counter, checking your prescriptions, uh, filling them, and making sure there aren't any drug interactions. And while that is true for many of of the pharmacists that I know. Um, pharmacists in a hospital setting, uh, especially clinical pharmacy, have many, many different tasks. So I'll talk a little bit about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, a lot of what I do is actually patient counseling. So we have patients who are newly diagnosed with cancer. Um, they might have had some fever, chills, maybe a little bit of weight loss, not thinking much of it, and they come in and they receive this diagnosis of cancer. Um, one thing about cancer is that, you know, it doesn't discriminate. It targets the young, the old, the rich, and the poor. Uh, it doesn't spare anyone, really. But my job is to empower our patients in terms of what to expect with their chemotherapy and how to help them with the side effects that they'll experience. So a lot of our patients are thrown with so much information, and my job is to make that information easily digestible. So. I sit down with our cancer patients for about an hour and we go through their specific chemotherapy regimen for their cancer and we talk about the side effects, what to expect, and how to uh, lessen or ease some of those side effects that they might experience. Um, things that are very common with our chemotherapy regimens are hair loss, uh, nerve pain or numbness and tingling in the hands and feet. Um, Patients might experience uh, changes in taste. Uh, so we go through all of the side effects, what to expect, and how to prevent some of those more serious side effects from happening, or at least um, easing some of those side effects. A lot of what I do is also interacting with other healthcare providers. So I, we work closely with our oncology nurses. We work closely with our providers. Uh, our you know, uh, attendings, our medical residents, medical students. It's all a big team, uh, and honestly, I couldn't do anything without them. Uh, so what inspires me? Um, a lot of it is feedback that I receive from our, our oncology patients. So right after we finish our chemotherapy teaching, we give them a business card, tell them if they have any questions about their chemotherapy regimen, if they read something online and they have more questions. As a healthcare provider and as someone who practices evidence-based medicine, my job is to provide our patients with the most up-to-date information uh, in regards to anything that they might have read. So uh, I'll look into studies, see if there's any evidence for what they read, and just present the data for our patients. Um, sometimes our patients call that number and they don't have any questions regarding their medications, but they just want to say, Thank you to so-and-so who counseled me on my chemotherapy regimen, and I found it very helpful. And honestly, that's what makes my day. That's what makes it worth it when I am here 5 in the morning working up our, our patients or staying late and finishing up notes. It's the impact that I'm able to have on the lives of, of my patients. Um, one piece of advice I have before I wrap up this video is that a lot of people think success is one straight line and I want to let you know that success is a lot of setbacks, it's a lot of failures, but the important thing is to keep being persistent, keep chasing your dreams, and keep having a positive impact on the lives of your patients. Thank you.